I ask Minister, how many Sri Lankan asylum seekers have been returned to Sri Lankan authorities via sea transfer and towbacks in the past month? Will the government cease any remaining transfers to Sri Lanka as a result of the interim injunction issued by the High Court? Senator Carr would know that in relation to a matter that is before the High Court, it is before the High Court, and as such, it would be improper for me to comment on that. The government is awaiting the decision. In relation to Senator Carr's question about the Order. return of asylum seekers to Sri Lanka, uh, I have before me that the, uh, those on the other side might be interested in. In fact, I'm happy to have leave given, Senator Vestiari, for me to table these press releases, because they are, of course, press releases that were issued by the previous government every single time they returned a group of asylum seekers to Sri Lanka. I have to say, it's always astounding the hypocrisy from the other side. When they return asylum seekers to Sri Lanka, that's OK. That's okay. That's okay. But when this government allegedly or does return asylum seekers to Sri Lanka, apparently that is bad. Senator Carr, your hypocrisy is astounding. Have asylum claims of people aboard, uh, uh, aboard any vessel at sea been assessed via teleconference? If so, how many and when? Again, you've got to love the hypocrisy, and I expect a direct answer. A direct answer. Senator Carr, in relation to your question, I believe that you are referring to the enhanced <laughs> screening process. In relation to the enhanced screening process, I advise the Senate that the processes that we have followed in relation to enhanced screening is the same process that was practised by the previous government. Uh, the question is very, very simple. Have asylum claims of people aboard any vessels at sea been assessed via teleconference? That is the question. The standing orders require that a minister be directly relevant to the question. Unfortunately, it does go to the other side's complete lack of knowledge in relation to particular processes that they themselves had in place uh, when they were in government, which also might explain the reason that we are in the state today that we are in, with over 50,000 people coming here illegally by boat. As I was saying, though, uh, Mr President, in relation Order. to... Former Minister O'Connor. Minister, stated, Minister, the time has expired for answering the question. How have the actions of the Australian government been consistent with Australia's obligation under the 1951 Refugee Convention, including the principle of non refoulement The hypocrisy uh, in relation to the question is quite frankly astounding. I can advise the Senate that at all times this government believes it is acting in accordance with our international obligations and our obligations regarding safety at sea. I can also advise the Senate that the assurances that we have received from the Sri Lankan government are the same assurances as were given to the former government. My question is in relation to the 41 asylum seekers who have been forcibly removed to Sri Lanka, with 153 still remaining unaccounted for. Minister, after only a five-minute interview and knowing that asylum seekers will face imminent jail sentence upon their return, what assurances does the government have that these people will remain safe from ongoing torture and persecution? There are two issues here that uh, do require a degree of circumspection. One is that we still have an operational matter underway, which it would be unwise to comment on. Secondly, these matters are currently being canvassed in the High Court, and therefore it would be inappropriate to canvass the matter any further in this particular forum. Uh, there is obviously the matter of the 41 asylum seekers who have been returned. That and is not a matter before the High Court. The question, Given the Senator Prime Anthony Minister's Young. comments that asylum seekers, uh, screening of these asylum seekers on, on the sea was in line with Australia's international obligations, despite what the United Nations says, when will the government release their legal advice supporting the Prime Minister's comments? Mr President, it's been a uh, long agreed um, uh, process of this parliament, both in the House of Representatives and the Senate, that legal advice to government in general terms is not released. And also, might I suggest, in the middle of a matter being determined by the High Court, it would be 
highly inappropriate for legal advice to be canvassed elsewhere other than, other than uh, in the High Court. But in relation to some of the assertions being made about Sri Lanka, uh, it is my understanding uh, that when people are returned to Sri Lanka, the police interview them. It is an offence to leave Sri Lanka illegally, but that is a process which is dealt with under Sri Lankan law and in full accordance with Sri Lanka law in a public fashion. I don't believe that people are jailed indefinitely on return. And do you know who said all those words? The former minister, Minister Bowen. Not Order. my words, but <laughs> Labor's Senator minister. Robertson. On June 26, the Minister for Immigration, Scott Morrison, proudly boasted when he told Parliament that, quote, stopping the boats is just the start for this government. We are just warming up. Is the return of asylum seekers back to their persecutors what the government has been warming up for, or are we yet to expect even more cruelty from this government? Mr President, in stopping the boats, we as a government are warming up to take our full complement of refugees in an orderly fashion from, around, from the refugee camps around the world. And someone who has visited some of these camps in relatively recent times, I can assure you that they asked me the question, why is it that the then government allowed all these queue jumpers to come in when we have been waiting patiently for over 12, sometimes 15 years waiting for placement, and you allow queue jumpers that pay criminals to jump the queue. I see no sense of social justice whatsoever in giving priority to those that bypass safe haven after safe haven after safe haven and then pay a criminal to get them to the front of the queue. I would prefer to look after those that neither have the moral compass nor the financial capacity to Thank you, capacity Minister. The time for answering the question jump. has expired. So